This has been probably one of the most highly anticipated uh, offerings uh, or, or listings in a very long time. Almost every year that we would talk in Davos, I would invariably ask you, are you going to go public? Are you going to list? And invariably, you wouldn't. So let's start with why now? Well, um, first of all, thank you for having me. And I, and I really would like to thank all the Palantirians who stuck with us and built this company and our investors who stuck with us. And, you know, over the years, we've been skeptical about uh, listing. And for lots of reasons, we, we really needed to, to build our products it, with enough protection so that we would be ready to launch them into the public space. Um, and we built, we built out PG, which is our government product and our foundry product, and, uh, and built a way to maintain them so that we wouldn't have to scale the number of people. And, you know, we've reached a base where we're, our company is very significant, and we believe being in the public space will help us with our clients and help us grow. And quite frankly, I believe the people at Palantir who've built this company over 17 years uh, deserved uh, access to liquidity. Uh, and so we, we decided this would be a great time for us. And uh, so far, it's been a really interesting process. And, and our clients are embracing it. So it's a, it's a really good time for us. And I'm, I'm very, very grateful. Alex, the, the single biggest question that, that investors ask about this company is 17 years in, uh, while you know may have an operating profit, the company unto itself is still not profitable. So, so walk us through what the path to profitability looks like. Well, you know, we build these products years before people build them, and that takes money. And what you see in the COVID uh, pandemic crisis is we had built this way of going to market with Foundry, which would allow us to literally supply an enterprise with a completely new stack of products within six hours and maintain them. Um, and what you saw when we did that is we grew the company 49%. 49% off of a 743 base. And the divergence between expenses and, uh, and growth is dramatic. Um, and we're, we're just going to be very, very focused on, on invigorating our software offering. Um, but when you're growing 49% off of a 740 base, um, I think that's a pretty strong indication of what the future could hold. And we're super proud of that. And I think you're seeing that people are taking a look at our financials. And our, 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 our company has often been viewed, viewed as complex and uh, needing explanation, both moral and financial. But it turns out our financials are quite simple. And you look at this dramatic growth with flatlining expenses. And I think that gives investors comfort. And it certainly makes me feel as um, co-founder and CEO that we made the right decision to invest heavily over well over a decade in building software the way other people don't to build it. And you see the results. Do you think, though, profitability is a 2022 proposition, a 2023 proposition. Can I push you on that? Well, you know, uh, you can push me, but of course, my lawyers will shoot me. I can tell you what I can tell you is we are very, very focused on building software a long time before other people building it, supplying it. And I'm, I think that our, our year first first half of the year growth will be reflective of the future. And if I'm right, uh, that will answer all of your interesting questions. And we'll be interviewing, you'll be interviewing me again at, maybe not at Davos, but virtually, and we'll see how we do. I'm, I'm right. quite confident, confident we'll do well. well uh, Alex, one of the other questions people ask is how to comp your company, meaning what are the comparables? Should this be considered uh, a technology company, a SaaS company, uh, or should this be considered a much more traditional consulting company? Can you speak to that? Well, um, I, I think what the investors are seeing is they're asking the question at this point. They used to ask, is this, is this a company that builds software for the government, and how do they build it? Of course, we always sold this as a license. Then they saw our margins in the first half of the year around 80 percent. So I think the real debate now has moved significantly away from, is this software, is this services? Because although people think we're very smart, we're not smart enough to get 80 percent uh, margins off of a services company. The question then is, how do you comp it? And, and honestly, I think that's something investors will have to figure out. We're not focused on that. We're focused on we are going to be the most important software company in the world. And people will figure out what that's valued over a long period of time. And we're very comfortable with investors toying around. It could be like this. It could be like that. We are going to deliver the world's best software it, with the world's most efficient way of delivering it. Investors will decide what's that, what's that wor is worth to them. And I think you'll find in, in a number of years that there will be a consensus. Palantir is a truly special software company 
that is arguably the most important software company in the world. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.